For this video we're going to continue our look at LoRaWAN network servers and in this instance it's the ThingStack cloud. We've already registered our gateway so we can see our gateway here and um, we've had some activity because uh, I recorded the video and had my microphone set to the wrong setting so I'm recording it all again but I have deleted everything uh, so if I go to my overview there's nothing under applications admin nothing's there we're going to start again so to add a device the first thing we need to do is add an application server so if we come to applications create a new application the application ID needs to be lowercase no special characters and that's it it's created the the application now the next thing is to register an end device so we can have we can have multiple end devices. An end device could is a sensor with LoRaWAN communication on the your application server, and we can have multiple gateways connecting to the application server as well. Now that's all done automatically, but the registering the devices on the application is a is a manual process. We're going to do over the air authentication, and what I'm going to do is I have a mile sensor. TH300, I think it is, or a EM300-TH, TH standing for temperature and humidity. So if we go into end devices, register a new end device, we can do a search. And this is where ThingStack is good. If you've got your, your device registered with them, you can scroll down the list and somewhere in here, mile site. We'll look for our sensor. There it is, EM300TH, temperature and humidity. The versions, I can get this from my uh, Neil Field Communications, which we'll show you in a minute, but uh, these are okay for what we're trying to do. Regional settings, we're on EU, and then the frequency plan should be the same. On the screen now, you can see the mobile phone app that you can get as a free download for my site it's called the toolbox app i've connected this is the last time i connected it was activated so let's just do a, a read now and then if i go to my settings under here i can see my code so you can see your device and your app eui we're looking for the join if you put your mouse over here the join eui formerly called app eui so this code here needs to be put into the join EUI and now we get the next bit of information so if we go back to the phone app we can see here the device EUI so we'll enter that that's nice and easy that's also on the label on the back of the device where the join or the app EUI isn't so let's copy the device we'll put that in now the app key is something different so if we have a look back on the mobile phone app you can see here application key when I last put it in uh, and connected it hides it so we never want to show the application key on the device to just enable that extra layer of security so what we can do is we can generate the key here cut and paste it into the mobile phone application so put it into here and then we'll click on register the device. So we'll do that and we'll see what happens next. After waiting for about two minutes, we have a, a connection and you can see here, the astute of you will notice that there's quite a bit of data traffic. That's because I got an invite to the pub just before recording this last bit of the video. So you can see the data arriving here now, 45, 21.5, and if I just get my phone and do another read, because this is not real-time data on the phone. It's me reading the sensor directly. You can see there 45. I haven't synced the time on the phone, so that's why I've got a difference here. Uh, I'm not too fussed about that, because when it, the, the, the data arrives here, it time and date stamps it anyway. So there we have our, our data coming in. Why is it automatically showing me the correct values rather than just the hexadecimal values? It's because my 
payload format has already been set as part of, say, like the template for this device. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to copy this string, and then under here you've got payload formatter, and there's one for uplink and one for downlink. But the uplink one is getting the um, the payload, which is my process value. So you can write this bit of code here. And what you can do is paste it and then test your decoder. And you can see your values here. So so you've got different ways you can you can mess around with the payload formatter. So it's up to you. Uh, you know, custom JavaScript formatter is probably the one you would go to if you're not using the built-in ones. There you have it, that's my data landing in in ThinkStack. So we've connected the a mile size sensor temperature and humidity to our cloud based ThinkStack account, which is free. I hope you found that useful. As per usual, please share this channel with your friends and colleagues. But for now, thanks for listening. Hope to see you again soon.